Uh, big welcome back to the Nick Elson Show, season six, episode 10. 10 already, believe it. 2023 is flying by generally, but even when it's kind of marked by podcast episodes doubly so. So today, I had to bring you this person. I just had to. The reason why I say I had to connect with her on LinkedIn as well, bringing kindness in biscuit form. <laughs> that really got me on the two levels. The kindness bit, love, biscuit, love. Uh, so without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lisa Shepherd. Thank you. Wow. What a strap line that is, by the way. Bringing kind to biscuit form. I love that. That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, it took us a while. We were working on our strap line and then and essentially it was like, what, what do we actually do? Like, that, that's what we do. So let's just use that. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's so cool. So before we go anywhere, um, tell everybody who you are, where you're from and what you do. I'm Lisa, Lisa Shepherd. I'm one of the founders of The Biscuery. My other half in business is Saskia Roskam. So whatever I talk about is as much down to her than to me. So we're kind of uh, joined by the hip. Um, <laughs> I am originally from Germany, now live in Leeds. I've been here for 10 years. And um, I originally met Saskia in a digital marketing agency. So that was the reason why I came to Leeds was to work in that agency. Met her there. Um, we started chatting, became friends. Um, started baking rather than socializing, drinking what what normal people do. We uh, we baked um, and and had this pipe dream of launching a little business, a little market store more than anything. Um, and then we did it one day after we had um, children, which was the worst time because we had less time than ever. But it was also the time where we wanted to make the most of our time more than ever. Um, and it brought us to on this wonderful and wild journey that we're on. And um, wow. doing an online business, we're a team of nine um, and focusing on, on branded and personalized biscuits. I love that. That's so cool. And we will kind of circle back to this, but... This show is all about kind of, and we have a very diverse audience. I do work in the prison system and education and businesses and all the way across the board. So I know that the common common theme has got to be biscuits, right? Everyone loves it. <laughs> so we definitely will come back to that. So don't switch off now, everybody. But, we'll come. but I want to kind of get really get behind the story behind this kind of brand and, uh, and your personal brand as well, which is also very cool. Um, tell us about kind of baby Lisa. Tell us about kind of growing up education, family life, and what's kind of brought you through to what you do today? Baby Lisa, I think I've always been quite determined and, and fierce and strong-willed. Uh, I've never really liked um, being told what to do. Um, I was quite good at school because to me it was like playing a game. So I knew that I just had to behave for a certain amount of hours um, to get the most out of this. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I was, I was a silent rebel probably in Stalam, I think. Um, I grew up in a wild and wonderful patchwork family. So I've got uh, two half siblings and two step siblings. Um, I'm the oldest, so carry a lot of responsibility naturally. <laughs> Um, yeah, I grew up in Germany, went to um, Vienna, to university, so left home. I've always loved traveling, um, kind of the adventure and the getting to know different cultures, languages, different how, how people do things differently. I've always kind of questioned the status quo, always been really strong about my values. So my mom tells me this story that we were in Greece when I was two and a half and we were on a boat and this guy just chucked his beer bottle into the sea and I shouted at him, you're polluting the environment. <laughs> 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 so I've always been, um, yeah, really strong values and, and not afraid to speak up for them. And um, in this personality test, test that we did a while ago, I came out as the defender. So kind of standing up for others. And um, so, yeah, that that's kind of. That know. makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and you, you mentioned kind of traveling and Vienna and then through to Leeds as well. What have you found is the kind of the main cultural differences between, say, Germany and, and the UK, for example? I think the big thing is that in Germany, people want to do things right at the expense, maybe, of giving things a chance or 
over here sometimes I think things maybe don't work as well, but at least people are getting a chance. Um, in Germany, you needed a, a certificate for everything. It, it can be very uptight and things run well and smoothly and go to schedule, but there's a, a bit of a lack of joy. So <laughs> life here suits me a little bit better in that way. Um, people people get more of a chance and opportunity um, and are not quite so, haven't, haven't lost the joy in the way. In the way. What brought you to Leeds originally? Well, my now husband is from the UK. He's not from Leeds, but we travelled the world together after I finished uni. And we lived in Germany after. I didn't like it for the reason I've just mentioned. It was hard as a young graduate in Germany. You don't really, um, you don't, you have no value because you don't have experience. You're young, you're female. I'm quite small as well. So I was I was like the lowest of the low. Uh, it was really hard for me to to get onto, yeah, into a career basically. And also I studied languages. So I was like, what does that even prepare you for? Um, so I was quite fed up with the system. I then got a job, but I didn't enjoy it at all. So I started applying for jobs in Germany and the UK and the best job offer came from Leeds. Um, so my husband said, I'm happy to move back if, if you are. Um, and then we, yeah, never left. <laughs> so you moved into, was that, a digital, was that straight into the digital world? Yeah, that was it. So it was for a um, pretty cool award-winning digital marketing agency and they had a big international team and they were recruiting um, native speakers because they said we can teach you how to do marketing but we can't teach marketers how to learn German so they flipped it on on their head so I, I got the job because I knew the language and the, uh, the culture as well so in a way what I study languages and culture did I could actually eventually use that in my job there yeah did you find it easy to acclimatize to British culture and weather potentially depending on where in Germany you're from yeah I think I do I think I I, I am a bit of a chameleon in that sense I think that I um and again that's what I learned at uni was about communication and um how to adapt with you know to the person you, you're speaking to um there's things that I will always be German in me. Um, I'm I'm always a bit colder than everybody else. <laughs> um, I always, when I write an email, I have to go back and add the Britishness of like, I hope you're well. Germans would just go straight to the point and like, hold on, <laughs> just be a bit friendly here. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I have. Uh, it, it helps to have a, a British husband who who you know taught me a lot on the way. I was like, tone it down, not quite so direct, maybe. <laughs> So what part of your journey did the did the parenting come first or did the entrepreneurship come first with the the new direction? So I started both at the same time in a way. Saskia and I started experimenting, working on recipes before I had my daughter. Then I had my daughter. And when she was eight months old, we decided to do this. And then we launched the business um, three months later when my daughter was nearly one. Wow. I mean, this is never a question I thought I'd ever ask anybody, but why biscuits? <laughs> it is a good question because often people ask me if biscuits are really my thing and I'm like to be honest they're not I, I love biscuits but that's not what drives me so I feel a bit like we fell into this because it was something we could start we have always enjoyed baking so it's more the process the how therapeutic it can be to just you know knead the dough and cut out the biscuits and be creative with it so Saskia and I always says the baking was an outlet for our creativity and sense of adventure because as new mums, there isn't a lot of space for that. You know, we both love traveling before we had kids and all of that, you know, comes to a halt. There is no more of that. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way the baking um, gave us that space, but um, we, at first we started selling uh, biscuits and cakes and apple pies. Um, and we moved into the biscuits because we could ship them. So then we didn't have to stand at cold, soggy farmer's markets. We had the online digital background. We're like, actually, we can reach way more people if we sell online, but you can't post a cake so easily. So then we moved into the biscuit world and we moved into the gifting world because we could only bake tiny volumes because we could only bake once our kids had gone to bed, you know, from seven till midnight is when we when we worked on, on the business. Um, and we could only bake... I don't know, maybe 150 biscuits. So we had to make them special. So that's when the whole personalization came into it. Mm. Um, so we could charge more because people bought them as gifts rather than to enjoy them. Um, yeah, absolutely. 
So how it stands now, um, what does that kind of look now? Are you still making yourself or is this kind of now a team of you or how does that look? We're now a team of nine women. Um, I don't bake anymore. Every now and then when someone's not well or yeah. when we're really busy. Hang up your oven gloves. You've, you've done the heavy graft. I have, yeah, yeah. And um, and so many other people can do it, whereas the stuff I do now that not you know it's not so easy to outsource so um yeah I, I don't do a lot of the hands-on work we work on the business now um and it's wonderful to have a team of of women who who yeah support us and um and that's what what really motivates me now to um, yeah build this lovely community and tribe and we're all working mums um we have very flexible um we work school hours many of us um yeah. I think it's fantastic. You can only really see these things in hindsight, usually. But as you said, your language is what use will that be? You found that use. The in terms of making the biscuits, now it's not about making the biscuits; it's about commercialising that in the nicest possible way. And the skills that you learned in your professional life there are coming in handy to promote your own business. So it kind of does all kind of flow quite nicely in hindsight, right? In hindsight, absolutely. Because I remember saying to my parents when I was. I don't know, maybe 12, that I want to be a baker. And they shut that right down. They were like, no, no, you're going to go to university. What do you mean? You have to get up at three and, you you know, and you're doing the same thing every day. They end up, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, well. And now, <laughs> you know, in a way, it's, I've showed them that it doesn't have to be that way. I'm, in a way, still a baker, um, but I made it my way. <laughs> I, I like that. In terms of business growth, I mean, as we all know, what kind of culture is, is key when it comes to this in terms of recruiting and making sure that you're bringing in the right people was it through kind of your network or people that you knew or knew of or was it kind of literally advertising and in, in, in interviewing process it was really special actually because we never had to really recruit and um, okay. it was people approaching us saying if you ever get to the stage that you need a team please think of me um so that's how we got our very first employee. Mm. Um, and then usually at Christmas, we get really busy. So we put a little post up just on a local Facebook group saying, if anyone is available, flexible hours, this or that. And lots of people messaged back and we we couldn't give them all a job. So then we just um, kept their details and kept checking back in with them whenever we we grew and needed more help. Um, so it's completely grown organically. Um, and we're still kind of, you know, everyone who started with us is still with us, apart from one lady who just completely changed um, industry. She wanted to go into care, um, which we couldn't give her. But everyone else was like, actually, I would really like to explore this within the business. And that's what we what we said to them when we first employed them. We said, we would love you to grow with us uh, and carve out your niche within the business. And they've all done that. Um, and now we're at a stage where, um, we're working with a lady who who came from Ukraine, so that gives me a lot of um, fulfillment to be able to help someone like that who works so incredibly hard and deserves it so much. Uh, and she's so thankful. Um, and then there's a lady who's not worked after having her children, so she hadn't worked for eight years, and it might have been really difficult for her to find a job. Um, and we never looked at her CV or has she been to university? I don't care. I just want to see yeah. that they are committed and they, they're bringing their heart and soul into this. Um, and I feel that that's all, you know, it works for us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well done. I mean, how long has the business been running now? So it's it's hard when we talk about a business because at first, obviously, it was it was just a, a glorified hobby. Yeah. Um, but we started in 2016. We quit our day jobs um the start of 2021. So that that I guess it's only been really two years, two and a half that we've taken it that I would call it a business. Yeah. yeah. We, we certainly were introduced during that kind of crazy two year period of, of kind of pandemics and lockdown. And we tried to get the this episode in last season, but I'm a big fluffy guy. I think you end up speaking to the right people at the right time. And it happens at the right time as well. Yeah. But in terms of, I guess there's two elements when it comes to things like the pandemic and lockdown and travel. And from a personal perspective, how difficult was that kind of having those restrictions not to get back to family or to travel generally, get, bearing on it's so important to you and has been. On the second and on the flip side of that, from a professional point of view, was there an increase in business due to 
how food was being delivered and, and how people were shopping. Yeah, I think it was uh, it was a, a blessing and a curse for us the pandemic. So initially, it was. I enjoyed it because I always said my daughter went to school too soon. I wasn't ready for her to go to school because in Germany, I was seven when I started school. My daughter was four. So I felt that she, I just missed her. And then all of a sudden I had all this time with her. So it was a blessing in that sense. And it was like the most gorgeous spring and summer, right? So we were just outside lots. And um, But obviously I did miss my family. It was It was nearly a year more than a year that I didn't see my sister my mum and dad came over after eight months but again we would normally see each other way before that um so that was hard I feel like obviously because of zoom and that we could stay in touch okay so that that wasn't too bad after the initial period of being really worried about everybody um so it was really stressful at the same time I'm not gonna just view this through rose tinted glasses it was you know I still had my day job we were growing the business we were homeschooling our kids we had an extension being done in a house so we lived in a building site I was applying for my British citizenship at the time so it, it was such a busy time <laughs> um, but we in a way I guess it made us stronger and from a business sense um, it made all the difference to us so when the first lockdown was imposed Dusk and I I had a phone call and I said or we both said we just want to do something because we're not key workers we can't physically help anyone but we want to do something and let's just do what we can do best let's bake and lift the spirits through our biscuits so what we launched something what we called kindness biscuits so people could nominate someone via email because we didn't have a web shop at that time mm-hmm. so they could nominate someone email us and say I would love you to send a biscuit to my sister who works on the COVID ward whatever with a personalized message which would handwrite and the biscuits would say either stay safe or missing you or thinking of you so they could pick those three messages one of those three messages and we would um, send them in the post free of charge wouldn't charge postage packaging anything um, and we had that as an unlimited thing to start with. But then as it is snowballed, people shared it. Um, and then it got picked up by a local Facebook group. Um, and then it was featured in the news. And then we had an email um, a second, like literally inbox was imploding. <laughs> and we were like, OK, we need to limit this. <laughs> this is too much now. So then we limited it, I think, to, I can't remember, maybe 50 biscuits a week. I um. Which is, then, is very generous. I guess it is still generous. We also had, after a little while, a very kind donor. <clears throat> so someone said they would love to pay for the postage because they want us to keep it running without losing any money. Obviously, we didn't get paid for the biscuits on our time, but that was the bit we wanted to bring into this. Yeah. Um, and what happened then, because we had to limit it, people said, okay, so if I can't get a free biscuit, then I'm going to pay for a biscuit because I want to support you because of what you've done. And that's something we never thought of that it wasn't a marketing campaign or PR stunt or anything we just wanted to pay something forward uh, and lift the spirits and help people feel more connected during these scary and hopeless times in a way Um, and what happened then is that our shop orders obviously we do B2B and B2C so we sell to businesses and consumers the B2B is where most of our money comes from normally that completely came to a halt there were no events no corporate launches anything so the B2C, which was normally quite a small arm of the business, um, increased by 400% wow. because of those kindness biscuits. So all of a sudden, we were busy again. We were making money. Uh, so that was the time, really, when Saskia and I looked at each other and said, if we can survive and thrive in a pandemic, what what are we waiting for? Let's just quit those you know, jobs and... Um, and do this and, and by that yeah. point we had also uh, you know worked up a little buffer we weren't paying ourselves lots because we still had the other job so we're like we have a bit of a buffer here if things go wrong and if we need to invest in this and that um, and that's what we did. I love that I think there was there was certainly a big shift in in kind of supporting local businesses as well mm. and I appreciate obviously you distribute anywhere but um, certainly from your locality there must have been an increase in in trying to support people too. Definitely, yeah. And small businesses in general. And I think also, um, you know, purpose-led and and value-based businesses. I feel like the pandemic was the starting point of that. And it's it's um it's continued since then, which which works for us because we've 
we've always done that you know it wasn't an afterthought of like oh we need to put some csr into place now it was always there <laughs> yeah absolutely and i think given the kind of economic situation at the moment combined with the pandemic and everything else that if you're going to pick a few years to start a business and grow a business you've certainly picked a good challenge isn't you're not one for a quiet life no <laughs> no we don't do things the easy way for sure <laughs> profile me is a super shareable mobile application designed to help professionals grow their personal brand. Proudly paperless, this powerful tool packs the power of web, social media, and messaging into one beautifully designed interface that offers a unique and human-centric way to connect and build trust with clients. Easy to share on any platform and easy to save to any phone's home screen. With Profile Me getting referred has never been easier. So I guess the big kind of question uh, from from the business side of things, from the from the biscuit side of things, is what's next? Do you have this kind of big vision? Do you have this kind of outrageous goal that you want to achieve with this, or is it just a case of just seeing where things go? We do and we don't. So we we have absolutely big goals and dreams, but we're not um, on this growth train of like you know we need to double every year and this cancerous way of, of of growth so we've always done things quite organically we've allowed enough time for us to follow the growth as people because i think it's essential that a business owner is working on themselves so they can be the best person they can be and the best leader and the best employer and the best partner and mother, you know, like there's so many roles I'm playing. I can't just um, spread myself too thinly because then everything falls apart. Um, and I know you talk about mental health and I I was there at a very early point in the, in the business that I spread myself too thinly and it didn't work out. Um, so I had to learn it the hard way in a way. So um, we do have plans. One thing we we want to do is go more into the events world. So we do um, we have a, a laser printer that uh, can print onto biscuits um, in in real time. So it takes about two minutes to print uh, twelve biscuits. Wow. So taking that to a trade show um, and people can um, print their faces onto the biscuits very cool it's that. really cool and we were approached um by a company in israel uh, about this because they had that in uh, for a trade show in las vegas and they couldn't find anybody in the uk to do that so they found us on google um and asked if we could do it and we were aware of that laser print but we didn't have it so we said we we've never done it before but we can and that's how we've always done things you know people come to us say can you do that we're like yeah <laughs> try and figure it out so we had three weeks to order that laser printer get our heads around it and then we took it out to london and they absolutely loved it they were like the ra is insane because they got to speak to so many people because everybody wanted to come to the store to get their face onto a biscuit uh, and whilst that was printing obviously the sales team could have a nice little chat with them so it was it was oh, huge for them um and as far as we're aware there's no one else doing it in the uk um so we'd love to do more of that you know, I, I spent my life in in and around the events world, and I've never seen that myself. So that's really really cool. Um, it is. And yeah, I, I, so I know lots of events people. I'll certainly be hooking you up after this. I think they need to know you. Oh, amazing! <laughs> yeah, dressed. love that. I'd love that. It's just so much fun. It gives me such a buzz to see people because like, because no one expects that when you walk into a trade show and they they're hoping to grab some, you know. Uh, I don't know business cards and uh, free pens or whatever, and then like, oh, can I can, can I have my dog on your biscuits? Like, yeah, you know anything. <laughs> I have my dog on your biscuits. That, that may have been me actually. <laughs> there were quite a few of those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, so that's a big thing. Uh, we'd also like to grow our B two C offerings, so doing more for the consumer. We would like to launch a subscription box, really, because for now, as we said. Um, people order our biscuits as gifts, but we know there's many people who love our biscuits that are just a little bit too expensive and a bit too indulgent to order them for themselves. So we'd like to bring out a way to make that happen as well. So that's the two big projects. That's an interesting one. Do you, do you ever see an avenue where it would go into the, the retail world? It's difficult because of the... Um, it's a volume dynamic, doesn't it? Yeah, completely. So for now, what we love about what we do is we have 100% uh, 
control. You know, there's no one who can say, actually, I want you to use this ingredient because it makes it cheaper or I want you to use plastic packaging because it makes it cheaper or, you know, the shelf life needs to be longer so it's not as fresh and, you know, the quality is compromised. So all of that we we control and we, you know, we can bring our values into it. Um, and again, because we don't, you know, we've never had any investment, there's no outside, we've bootstrapped everything from the start from a 500 pound investment from our own pockets. So there's no one else we need to report to or, you know, we we don't have to um yeah compromise our quality and, and what we stand for so it, it's something obviously that would could be a massive route for us to go down but i wonder if it's the right one yeah i love that because like i said you're kind of prioritizing your culture first and foremost which is obviously what it's your kind of baby in that sense isn't it as well that's uh, yeah 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 i get that i mean you're very um I say kindly, but also very candidly, uh, kind of mentioned your own challenges when it comes to things like mental health. And um, that's such a, a big question for somebody that wears so many hats, such as yourself, that all these roles that you have in life, do you find time to recharge? And actually, what do you do to recharge your batteries? What do you love to do away from professional life? I think it's such an important topic to to talk about, especially for entrepreneurs and then mothers and then for someone who's both uh, or parents um because there's a lot of this hustle culture yeah. but then there's also this self-care culture and I feel it often it's so inauthentic like who can actually do this every day so I'm not gonna say I've got it figured out at all but what I what has made a massive difference to me is getting up earlier in the morning. Yeah. So going to bed earlier, getting up earlier. So what I do now is I try and be up at least half an hour before my kids get up. And that's my time. You know, I just light a candle to my life. I read a little, um, I have like this stoic book that I just read a chapter a day and um, try to meditate, even if it's just five minutes in silence. Like again, not rocket science there. And I'm not nailing it. Sometimes my thoughts are everywhere, but at least I'm taking this time. Um, I, I journal a little bit, not as much as I'd like, but at least I have a journal, have a pen, it's here. <laughs> Um, so that has made a huge difference for me just to, to how my day starts as well because I felt like I was always on the back foot of like trying to catch up with everything from from the minute my kids were up and I was up um, so if that's an option for people I would say try that because it's it, I, I do think how your day starts makes a huge difference to to how your day unfolds uh, another thing is um, I'm a lot more disciplined with when I stop working because I love what I do and I could do it all day long but my children are a natural stopgap in a way you know when they come home from school I'm like okay this is our time now and I know there's still four emails that I haven't replied to but none of this is urgent and we have this little mantra in the biscuitry where we say it's just biscuits so whenever something goes wrong and this is not to say that we don't care. We care hugely. Absolutely. But sometimes our mental health or, you know, is, is more important or our children's well-being, you know, if a child is unwell, then someone can't come in and then an order is not late. We're not usually late for anything, but it might just be a bit more higgledy-piggledy. Um, that's what we then, you know, it's just biscuits. Let's not get carried away here. It's not worth anybody losing sleep over it. We're not saving lives you know we're spreading <laughs> kindness and biscuit for but let's extend this kindness to ourselves because we need it right now so um I think that's something that I um I'm still learning but I'm, I'm getting better at it since I have a team uh, I I am quite disciplined with not working at the weekend so that definitely helps to really use the weekends to relax recharge and be with my family be by myself I've, I've noticed how much I enjoy being by myself so sometimes I just go for a walk by myself again it doesn't have to be a, a retreat in Ibiza you can just go for half an hour walk in the woods I walk to work as well that really helps me just being in the fresh air it's about an hour a day that I walk um so I think it is those little things but consistently yeah absolutely I think you're right you, you mentioned some really important things that is 
it's so refreshing to hear from somebody who is an entrepreneur and a leader and somebody who looks after because that's the thing who looks after the people who looks after people so all these roles that you have you have a responsibility for the others then there is a problem I, and i have noticed it more in the uk than i have in other countries that i work in that we have we have a feel that self-care is selfish so we feel guilty when we put ourselves before anything or anyone but also this this challenge around mental health and well-being as being dry heavy and and potentially boring and we don't want to engage with it or something like you said or is fluffy and kind of like a joystick and uh, run around naked around a bonfire not for anything by the way but somewhere in the middle is a tree kind of thing i think that's the problem there's these perceptions of, and it's the same with being an entrepreneur that you have to be like 100 miles an hour every single day and getting up at three in the morning the, this i think it's a case of finding your own way isn't it there, there's this kind of expectation um absolutely it's refreshing it's so refreshing to hear you say that actually because a lot of people can uh consider it a weakness to say anything different but yeah it's great really great to hear Thank you. No, I'm, I'm quite passionate about that because when we first started this, I I felt anything but an entrepreneur, you know, have no business knowledge, no background in business, didn't study business, have never, you know, my family isn't entrepreneurial. Um, so I felt like this was my space to be in. And yeah. now the more we're growing this and the more we're invited to bigger events or networking things or awards and we're winning awards and all of this, the more I see I do have a seat at this table. I do have something to add because I'm doing it my way and because I'm showing people that it can be done this way and the status quo that, you know, you have to do this and you have to hustle and you have to work 70 hours and it, it can't be the way. And it, for some people it might, but it shouldn't be the status quo. Um, yeah. So I'm, that's another thing that I want to do through my business is inspire others that it can be done in a different way and bringing those female values into the world of work and saying you know it's all about for us anyway collaboration and empathy and making sure you know if someone um isn't baking great biscuits you know we we ask her if anything's wrong you know are you are you all right do you have a bad day or and, and quite often that's the case you know you yeah. figure out the child was sick in the night and she couldn't sleep or um but that's not how it's traditionally done right <laughs> like oh exactly and and, and that, that said, it's great. So you have, you have the walk to work. So you have your own bakery now. Yes. So we, again, after the pandemic, we had um, got to a stage, or kind of during the pandemic, I suppose, but after the lockdowns, that we were outgrowing our home kitchens because everything was done from home until then, and we looked for a way to hire our first um, members of staff and move out of the home. But it was a massive step for us because we hadn't, um, you know, we weren't really making enough money to pay for, for premises and employees. So we reached out to our former employer who we just left <laughs> um, <laughs> because we knew that their canteen was empty um, because after the pandemic, they wouldn't um, replace the caterer. There weren't enough people in the office. Everybody was still working from home. So we asked them if we could use their canteen, their little commercial kitchen and bake from there. And then um, we found them, um, we made a very good deal with them. They charged us a little bit of money, but it was very affordable for us. Um, and our first members of staff, we hired for 10 hours a week each. So again, it was, you know, it was um, affordable um, very low risk, still enough risk for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we grew from there and then we outgrew that place after a year or so. So we you know, looked for something else, found a very derelict old convenience store and um, gave that a lot of uh, love and TLC of uh, about three months. And now it's our our own little um oh, wow. assessment. Love that. That's so cool. And so kind of what about the, the, the kind of the family response now that you're kind of forging your own way as a baker, as a fantastic baker and entrepreneur, kind of do you still get that kind of thing? You can never do that kind of thing. <laughs> um or is it, it the greatest two-finger moment ever like look, look what i did <laughs> yeah no they're, they're very proud they're very proud um i think they probably wouldn't even remember saying that to me to be yeah, honest exactly. yeah. this is a, this is a right because i think it's a definition isn't it the definition of baker is that how everyone has their own kind of beliefs about what somebody is and, and what somebody does and yeah mm -hmm. and, and obviously you've taken it holds to a whole new level 
Yeah. And my mom keeps saying, because they're all they're social workers, my mom and my stepdad. So she keeps oh. saying, you're actually a social worker. You know, you do so much for the community. You're employing all these people who would struggle to find employment traditionally. So for her, obviously, with her hat on, she's like, you, you're one of me. I'm like, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think there's something in that and it's certainly crossed my mind as I've been talking to you today it's kind of like it seems biscuits are kind of like the vehicle for what you do it's, oh it's absolutely not, yeah it's not what you do it's the vehicle for what you do and then yeah the impact that's actually the product in that sense right I guess right absolutely and it's so nice that you see that because we often say our biscuits are just the the vessel for messages for again that kindness that connection um that femininity in a way that bringing people together and uh, taking a moment out of their day to enjoy something and um, show an appreciation to someone we do this thing now called um gratitude's day where every tuesday we send so. out free biscuits um, which is a remnant from the kindness biscuits in the in the pandemic. So people again can nominate someone. It's now on the web shop. It's not quite so convoluted with sending emails. You can just check out with a discount code. Again, it's limited amount, um, and uh, we send that biscuit to someone completely free of charge, and they can add a personalized note. And it's such a win 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 situation because obviously the person who receives the biscuit is a huge surprise for them. They're like, wow, well, wow, I've never seen a personalized jammy dodger. Um, uh, the person who sends them feels really happy for making someone's day. And then we feel really happy for facilitating this, for, for you know, creating this vessel. And um, yeah, so it's it's definitely exactly that. So the biscuit, if we were graphic designers, we would probably be selling cards right now. But we love food and we love biscuits. Um, so we um, we made it in biscuit form. And it's literally the greatest example of paying it forward we've had on the show in the six seasons that we've been doing this. So, yeah, it, it's amazing. Thank you. And You've been such a wonderful guest. But before I do let you go, I need to ask you one final question. Uh, I'm now the MC of the O2 Arena in London. 20,000 people have paid their hard-earned money to come and hear you do your thing. You're sat back in the green room and you hear me call your name and your walk-on music kicks in, that song that motivates you, that lifts you, that gets you at peak state. Lisa Shepard, what would your walk-on music be and why? Slightly cheesy but I'm going to pick uh, I'm German, so music is not, you know. Um, I'm going to pick uh, Sowing the Seeds of Love for, from um, Tears for Fears. June. Oh, because my mum used to listen to that when I was little, and I just loved the, the sunflowers and, you know, the album cover, I think, as a child was like, whoa. Um, and also I listened to that song before I went into my final exam at uni and it was quite a big one. It counted like a third of my whole degree or whatever. And I that was the first time I used music to kind of pump myself up. Um, uh-huh. And I walked in and I smashed it. And since then, that <laughs> song has that that. Um, yeah, that role in my life. So I would use it for that. Come into it, Lisa Shepherd. Thank you. It's such an amazing guest. Thank you. I've really enjoyed our chat. Like, smiling throughout, um, and I'm sure everybody else will be who's watching this and listening to this right now. So, Lisa, thank you for giving up your busy time to be with us today. Thank um, you for love having the me. Journey and um, all the best ongoing. And I'm sure you'll be back on a future episode with uh, when your empire continues to build uh, in the way that you're building it. <laughs> Um, so, but for everybody else, please do hit like, subscribe and all that jazz. You know, I'm not a details guy, whatever it takes to get you back here next Monday. We have another amazing guest to bring you in the shape of Ewan Mockery. Ewan is an author and neuro-linguistic programming coach uh, who and literally his book blew me away when I read it. So really excited to have him on the show. Uh, and again, big thanks to Lisa for today. And for me to you, have a great week ahead. Take care. Be happy. Stay well. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.